In this video, we'll be introducing the comparator pump. First, as always, let's put the ground so that Multisim doesn't complain. And we can then add a voltage source. This time we want AC so that we can see the effect this op-amp has both on the positive and negative potentials with everything in between them. I'll leave the settings as they are, a peak voltage of 1 volt and a frequency of 1000 Hz for the power supply. We will be using the three terminal op-amp connecting the non-inverting input to the positive terminal of the power supply and the inverting input to the ground. I will add a resistor to use its node uh, to end the wire and the reason I'm doing this is because in Multisim we can only connect the probes to wires. Now one thing to remember is there is no way an op-amp can amplify an input signal if it doesn't have a power supply with which to do it. Even though this op-amp has only three terminals, it does actually have a power supply we can specify. You just need to go to settings of the op-amp. Here you can specify the open loop gain of the op-amp, which I think will leave at 200,000, as that's large enough. We can also specify the positive and negative power supplies of the op-amp. We will change that to 10 volts and minus 10 volts, so it's easier to look at the graph later on. Now I'm going to put three probes measuring with respect to ground. The first I will place on the non-inverting terminal of the op-amp, one at the output and one at the inverting terminal of the op-amp. Now what do you think you would expect at each of these probes? Well, let's run the simulation now to find out. Of course, we have one probe measuring zero, zero volts at all times. And this probe is going to correspond to the non-inverting input as it's always connected to ground, so it's always going to stay at zero. Then we have this small AC signal with a peak voltage of about one volt. And this is going to be the probe which is connected to the positive terminal of the power supply. And finally, we have the probe at the output of the op-amp. Now, you might think that the output looks a little bit funny and nothing like the input. After all, op-amps are just meant to amplify the signal, right, and not change it. So why is it appearing like a square wave? Well, if you look at what the limits are of the square wave, you will notice that they are at plus 10 volts and minus 10 volts, which coincides to the power supply of our op-amp. This is called saturation. At plus 10 volts, there's going to be positive saturation, and at minus 10 volts, there's going to be negative saturation. The op-amp cannot provide more power than it is given. So every output value above 10 volts will have a value of 10 volts, and every value below minus 10 volts will have a value of minus 10 volts. How much power do you think we would need to prevent saturation in this case? Remember, the open loop gain of the op-amp was 200,000. So to see the signal without saturation, we would need at least 200,000 volts. Imagine providing that. Operational amplifiers are pretty much never used in their open loop configuration because there is a very small range of inputs in which the outputs are not saturated. In the next lecture you will learn how you can control this gain by using the op-amp in a closed loop configuration.